There's lots of things that we need to start engaging with because the hour that we're in demands it. I spoke last time about how we're becoming a supernatural generation and how everybody loves, you know, dare I say Harry Potter in this meeting. But people love Harry Potter and all that stuff. And they love, you know, finding out about the supernatural capacity of the human heart. That there's a thing in us that says we're made for much more than the material world. And even physics has gone down the same route because quantum physics has shown what we think is true is actually not true that we're phasing in and out of another dimension, that the electrons and, and the, proto, uh, the, the, the photons all around us are doing quantum tunneling, quantum entanglement, moving to and fro. We're all affecting each other in ways that we didn't know, and science is starting to prove what the Bible already said. They're converging. In fact, I think I read the other day, 60% of people that study quantum physics end up believing in God. I mentioned last time I was here that, um, you know, uh, atheism is a dying breed on the earth. And we're going into more and more of a supernatural era. The Bible itself says that in the last days there will be signs in the heavens, signs on the earth. There will be dreams and visions. And, and, and visions is actually divinely appointed appearances. So in the end times, there's going to be appearances, visions, signs, wonders. In fact, God's going to be famous in all the earth. It says the knowledge of his glory is going to cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. Every nation's going to know. It's going to be like the days of Moses. When Moses led them out of Egypt, when the Lord led them out of Egypt, God got really famous. God's going to do it again. Let me tell you now, if you were one of those shepherds in the field when the angels appeared... And you had iPhones, they would have been cha-ching, YouTube would have been talking, Facebook would have been talking. Those shepherds would have been saying, you would not believe what just happened. Angels failed the sky and were singing. <laughs> we're in days where it's all going to be caught on camera. God knows what's going on. He's accelerating technology. He's breaking the demonic strongholds off it because it was behind schedule. And he's accelerating technology to the point where it's going to be magical. It will look like magic because it's a, it's a manifestation of his goodness. It's a good thing to have a hot shower. <laughs> Some people go, yeah, that's right, that's great. Technology is a really good thing. I came in a car and it only took an hour to get here from Cardiff. I went on a bridge that was built using technology. Technology is awesome, and technology is gonna, we're going to find through technology that we're going to see the goodness of the Lord impact every sphere of culture and society. It's not independent from God. It's a manifestation of God. Amen. <laughs> I think everybody's brains have already gone, and I haven't even got onto the message yet. Okay. Right. Well, we'll try not to do that again tonight. So I'm, ho- I'm going to try and make it a little bit simpler now, right? I am. I'm trying to simplify stuff. And tonight we're we're on the series on the Ecclesia. What is the Ecclesia of God? What are we? And I've been preaching that if any man be in Christ, he is a brand new creation. That we're not human. The Bible doesn't teach that we're human. It teaches that Jesus came to start a new breed. He was the firstborn. Our lineage doesn't go back to Adam. If any man be in Christ, he is a brand new creation. The old order has gone and the new has already begun. So we're of a new order that's no longer human. Paul even said, if you're arguing, you're acting like humans again. You're starting to act like you were before, but that's not what you are. You are something brand new. And all of the cosmos is waiting for the unveiling of it. Wow. Now we have to acquaint ourselves with the new, Colossians 3 in the mirror translation, because of where we are in the spirit, says acquaint yourself with the new. And this school has been about teaching on the new order, that we're now entangled into Jesus in heavenly places, that we're there and we're here, we're transdimensional, we're gates, we're portals, we're doors, we've got eternity in our heart, we've got heaven in our heart. We are like nothing in the cosmos, angels are not like that. Animals are not like that. We are a one of a kind shadow of his substance. 
And as he is, so we are. And Bill Johnson's been teaching recently that when John said, as he is, so we are, he was talking about the resurrected Christ. That the resurrected Christ is the pattern or the blueprint of our genesis, of our design, of who we actually are. We are meant to be as he is. As he is post-resurrection, moving to and fro, appearing, disappearing. Wow. All of this will come to fulfillment. Ultimately, every word will be fulfilled. Wow, yeah, yeah, yeah. So tonight, I'm expanding on what it means to be the ecclesia, that there's an invitation to be a throne room company. And heaven's as close to you as your hand, and heaven's in you. So what's the problem? The way we think. Because we believe in illusion... But the truth sets us free. Now the illusion is distance. I'm in him, he's in me. It's too late. But you're transformed by the renewal of your mind. So it's the way that you think or the repentance or change your perspective of your mind causes transformation. Because the problem isn't what you are, it's what you think. Because you're already kainos, which means brand new creation of a new type or quality or of a new order. As opposed to neos, which is the other word for new, which means of the primitive or archaic. You are not of the primitive or archaic order of Adam. You are of the kainos, new creation reality of Christ. As he is, so you are. He is the firstborn of a new breed. Everybody all right? Yeah? Okay, good. So that's what we've been talking about. Now I want to just move further. We talked about the courts and being in heaven. Tonight I want to talk about a controversial subject, but it shouldn't be controversial. I want to talk about the relationship between the ecclesia and the angelic realm. I believe that we are in an era that is going to be marked by angelic activity on a scale that the earth has never seen. It says the harvest is the end of the age and the angels are the harvesters. If there's going to be a big harvest, there's going to be a big flow of angels. Is it possible that God has ordained that there would be a company of angels that have never come to the earth before that have been released in our generation? Is it possible that we are surrounded by an innumerable company? You have come to Mount Zion. When you pray, this is where you appear. This is the angelic canopy around the name of Jesus. This has been in the name. This has been in God, in Christ, in the Father, surrounded by the canopy. And we are surrounded by an innumerable company of angels. And God loves angels. So we should love angels. God created them before us. And they rejoiced at our creation. He surrounds himself with them. I think he's got a bit of an angel thing going on. So why haven't we? Because a a religious principality, remember what I said to a Hebrew, a principality is something that blocks a gate. A principality is sat in the church and blocked the gate to the angelic realm by saying you can't talk to angels until you die, therefore elevating death as the qualification. Good theology. Death is now the qualification for you to talk to them. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the door. Whoever believes in me can go in and out. You can go in and out, and you are meant to be as he is. You're meant to be surrounded by an angelic host, where for you there's a new normal, that you should walk with angels. Why? Because he walks with angels. Because as he is, so you are. He's friends with angels. Yes, you can be friends with angels. Because he's friends with angels. He knows Gabriel and Michael and all those. Do you know, they've all got different names. They're not all called Gabriel and Michael. That would be really confusing. (laughs) Some reason there's been such a stronghold. And, you know, one of the main names of God in Scripture, I think it's his most used name, is the Lord of hosts, which means the Lord of the angel armies. That is how he reveals himself. And I think it's time for us to get to know angels. So tonight we're going to engage the angelic realm through honor. Because I've learned a process that what you speak about starts to happen. 
what you honor starts to multiply. In other words, magnification. You come magnify the Lord with me. When you magnify, you turn into something and it begins to have substance around you. Whoa. Controversy always surrounds oil. Controversy always surrounds something that's precious. Controversy surrounds the blood of Jesus. Some churches wish you'd never have any songs with the word blood in. But there's something in the blood (laughs) that is so powerful. Marriage. Huge controversy over marriage. But there's something in marriage that is so intrinsically God. Angels. There would be massive people, loads of people rather you didn't talk about them. But there's something intrinsically revealed about God through them. And I have seen through a series of visions and encounters that have been going on for several years that there's going to be a new generation released now that are called those that walk with angels. Those that walk with angels are going to be marked by the winds of heaven and miracles and stadiums and manifestations that will shake and break and cause great change. Hey, hey, hey. Years ago when I was in the Toronto School of Ministry, I found a prophetic word that Mike Bickle had had. And the Lord had said, I'm coming as, oil, I'm coming as wine. <laughs> And he sure was releasing a lot of wine there. Because we're meant to be a bridal company full of wine. He said, I'm coming as fire. He's coming as the burning man, the burning heart, the company of burning hearts, the burning one. That's going to even change the record of our DNA. Pentecost is fire in your bones. A reconfiguration of the matter of the human heart. Transformation on a DNA and molecular level. And he's coming as the winds. And this is the release of the messengers of his face, the messengers of his presence. Are they not winds? Are they not fire? And there's a deluge and a force of heaven where we're going to find, wow, the heaven rules. Heaven rules. Heaven rules. And we are not alone. And this ecclesia is going to be marked by the merger of heaven and earth because we're one family. Ephesians 3, 14 and 15 says, we're one family in heaven and earth. God calls us a family. It's time to start acting like a family because we said you can't talk to angels, but you talk to your cat. That's not worshiping a cat. You talk to your neighbors. That's not worshiping your neighbors. I'm talking to you. I'm not worshiping you. I mean, in our church culture, we're allowed to talk about every kind of devil there is. So I think we should, we should readdress the balance and talk about angels. Because I love it when they show up. I love what they do. I love who they are. I love what they bring. I love the fact they're all so different, that there's not just one type of angel. There's so many different types. I love the colors that they bring. I love the gifts that they bring. Paul Keith Davis had this powerful encounter that I think is so pertinent to what's happening right now in Paris. Okay. On the, January the 7th, there was meant to be a comet overhead, which has been. I've posted about this. Comet Lovejoy is overhead right now. How many of you know that God frames up the new year and speaks life over the earth, and he uses the heavens to declare his glory? You know, they followed a star to Jesus. The heavens speak. We got, that's another thing. That's another topic. But I'm going to go right into that one day, and we're going to learn our place there. We've got a place amongst the stars. We have. The whole of creation is waiting. And it all needs to be brought under the government and light of God, right? So Comet Lovejoy was overhead, and I was like, this is awesome. And it was going to be brightest on January the 7th. And January the 7th is when this terrorism happened. And there's two con- conflicting messages going on right now. And this great evil has been released. Some see it as 2012 was the end of an era. I know people like Kat Kerr and Ian Clayton and, and many others knew, and the Mayans thought that 2012 was going to be a marker, December. You know, they'd seen something in their calendar system, so maybe they were onto something. But a new era has been released, and how have you guys noticed that suddenly evil has gone to a level in a short time that would have blown our brains 20 years ago? I mean, I've looked at some of the newscasts of people like the, 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 the slave, the women, sex trade, 
the, the stuff that is going on, the beheadings, putting people's heads on poles, crucifixions, whole communities of Christians being murdered. I've seen the photographs of a whole family all shot in their home. I've seen the photographs of a crate full of Christian heads. From now, I've seen a photograph of, you know, it's gross, gross darkness. But how many of you guys know it says gross darkness will be upon the earth? It uses that word. And it, it says arise and shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord is rising upon you. Now God spoke to Paul Keith Davis about this a number of years ago. He was in bed and he went into a trance and started to speak out. And he saw these manhole covers being opened. And darkness was coming out of the ground. And it was the spirits like that on Hitler. And the spirits of like that on Stalin. And it was gross. Evil was being released upon the earth. The enemy trying to surge because time was short. And he heard this voice speak to him. And this is what happened. It says, well, the Lord said... I am sending messengers of my face. That's in scripture. The angel of his face, the angel of his presence. He is sending help. Help is coming. And he told me that there are angels that have stood in the presence of Almighty God from the beginning of time that have waited for this generation. This generation, there is a holy heavenly host that has been waiting for this hour, for this confrontation. And they've been especially prepared. Consider this, what is a harvest? A harvest is when a fruit comes to full maturity. What are we seeing happen on the earth right now? You know, you can, you can buy a woman for $8 now. There are more people that are slaves now than in the Roman Empire. We are seeing the maturity of something, but there's going to be a response where something is going to start happening within us. Change is here. Is this all right, guys? I know it's heavy. It's like, oh, I know it's heavy. Oh, it is heavy. It is heavy. Stand with me, guys. Please stand with me. What I'm because I'm smacking against stuff so hard. It's unreal. They have been especially prepared. I looked up and I saw a door opened in heaven. I saw a flood of angels from heaven who'd stood in the presence of God since the beginning of time. I saw them coming and teaching people in their bedrooms. And he heard their voice say, we have to respond to the level of darkness and evil coming to this generation in like fashion. So great changes here. I don't want to be informed. I don't, first of all, you can be ignorant about change. And just watch X Factor. Or you can be aware of it and be educated about it. Well, you know, it's like, it depends on what's going on in your heart. Like, I'm burning for something. There's a fire that's sustained by the Father inside me. It's burning stronger and stronger. It isn't diminishing. Hey. Oh, yeah. It's the Father occupying the house of his glory and glorifying the house of his glory. Woo. Oh. Oh. Whoa. See, we're the powerful ones. We can choose what kind of life we have and what kind of existence we have because he's made us a new creation. These angels of his presence are coming, and and Paul Keith says it's time to contend for that, and that's what I'm presenting in the courts tonight. I'm here, but I'm in the court. I'm Ecclesia. I'm before God in Zion. I'm I'm in two-dimensional realms. I know exactly what I'm doing. I'm framing up what needs to happen in England, what needs to happen here is a manifestation of the goodness and love of God and the miraculous And the power of the age to come. Because this conflict will not be won by painting fences or picking up litter. And I honor that. I've done that. And I believe in that. But we mustn't just remain in that. We'll always pick up litter. We'll always love our grandkids and change their nappies. But if that's all we are, then we have most miserably failed for a generation. And Europe today demands a different kind of spirit. Europe today demands a, 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 a Jacob generation that will wrestle for the blessing but will, will ascend. 
that will engage something so profoundly that they are changed forever and reproduce something that's for nations. Wow, Lord, we honor the angels. We honor. We, we understand the law of honor, that what we honor is able to function around us. What we honor is an open door. That what has weight in our hearts has weight in the earth. And we stand on behalf of the ecclesia in the courts of heaven. And we say, forgive us, Lord. Forgive us. Forgive us, friends, for what we have done, for, for the dishonor that we brought. Whoa. Yay. It's a day like Daniel 9, where he was crying out and saying he knew that they were in a day of fulfillment. He'd read Jeremiah's scroll. Have you heard what the prophets have said the last three decades since the 1960s? What Paul Cain said. What Bob Jones said about a billion harvest. What Paul Cain said in Wales that they'd knock down the Cardiff Arms Park and build a new stadium and it would be at this angle. And that stadium exists now. And he said that stadium will be filled. What the prophets have been saying, Gene Darnell, what people saw, Bobby Connor and all these other names and, and, and John Paul Jackson and whoever, you know, even going back to Smith Wigglesworth that saw something that was going to happen on these islands, that framed up something, all these saints that surround us, believing that God hasn't prepared, God's prepared something better for us, that together, a togetherness, they're going to be in this too. And I'll talk about that next month. I'm going to talk about the cloud of witnesses and the function of the cloud of witnesses. But we are so pregnant with possibility. And Daniel was in that time where everything was against them. And Jerusalem's gates were down and whatever else. And they needed to be restored. And he began to step into a courtroom in Daniel 9. He said, we and your people have sinned. We have done this. We turned from you. We did this, Lord. We allowed this. We turned. And we've reaped what we've sown. But Lord, forgive. Lord, act. Lord, move. And you, as the prayer builds, it gets more and more passionate. And then suddenly Gabriel comes out and says, highly favored. Precious man of God. Wow. And Gabriel said, I've come to give you clarity and skill to understand. And he began to unlock a revelatory realm over Daniel, where Daniel saw vision after vision after vision. And God wants to come again to people that are contending and standing for something different. Wow. That are standing for reality. They're standing... That God never changes. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I come from a nation that's been marked by the angelic. You do. Going back to the Celtic saints, where they used to have councils of angels. Like Columba on the Isle of Iona. I've I've actually stood in the sandy valley where he used to stand face to face with councils of angels. They used to come and tell them who to anoint as kings of Ireland. All the different kings of Ireland would come. The king of Britain got saved. King Oswald got saved. The king of Britain got saved. And tiny little hubs appeared everywhere. Everywhere in Wales is called Llan or Tre, which is pretty much everywhere, was a house of prayer surrounded by a community. Merthyr Tydfil up the road, the martyrdom place of Tydfil. And hubs appeared where heaven and earth were blended into one and they shaped not just a moment of time but generations. Even now the landscape's marked by the Celtic crosses. Even now their voice speaks and they brought art. It wasn't just like, hey, we're angel freaks. No, they brought art. They taught the picks up in Scotland who had been cut off by a wall. They were barbarians. Just a small group of them came in a coracle, totally changed the place. This is all documented. I'm not even reading from church history. I'm reading from secular history. The BBC did a whole series, four-part series, just on what happened when 12 crazy guys went over to Pickland and that's Scotland and radically changed it, but taught them language, art, culture, technology. And do you know we wouldn't even have a united kingdom now if it wasn't for them because it was Christianity that, 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 that unified the Angles, the Saxons, the Picts, the Cornish, the Welsh, the Irish... Because God started bleeding across boundaries of culture because culture was irrelevant. But they were marked by the angelic. Sometimes they'd go for walks and angels would just come with them just to be friends on the road. Imagine you're driving somewhere and one of them just gets in at the lights. A carjacking with Jesus. 
We, I started framing this up. We had a guy knock on the door three times and vanish. Angels come, feathers come, gold dust come. I want to show you just a couple of these. Uh, the first couple of slides. I, yeah, this is Branham, one of the guys that walked in the angelic. I'm going to talk about him in a minute, so skip ahead. Skip ahead. This is Gary Oates. Can we just turn the light down a second? This is Gary Oates. This is how I got into the angelic, through hearing this story of this guy, Gary Oates, an, an ordinary pastor who was hungry, and he, five families left his church. He was completely devastated. He was on a mission trip with Randy Clark, crying out for God. Suddenly, he, was, he had his head down. He looked up, and he could see angels, and got pulled out of his body, up through the tent, saw Jesus panicked, and came back into his body, fell splat on the floor. No one knew what to do with him. He wrote a book on it. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. This is a photo from Toronto. Way. And it's caught the angel on it. Are they, is he not the father of lights? They can take on many forms. Jesus appeared as a glowing orb, remember, to Paul. Why is it showing up? Because the early generation, this is science now, the, the first few years of, of digital cameras were actually recording infrared spectrums. These exist in the infrared spectrum, but I've seen them many times visibly, and they've been documented in many moves of God visibly. In Wales, they, there was a woman that couldn't leave her village, and the revival was going on. God hadn't moved. She cried out and said, God, use me. So God sent her an angelic ministry team, and they were orbs, and they would fly down chimneys, and all she had to do was go in the house... And they would be under conviction. And she led the whole village to the Lord. This got in the newspapers. The, 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 the national press reported on it. The Western Mail. You could still hear the stories today of the press actually saying, she said, don't go home. Stay here. They stood outside, saw red balls, orange balls, white balls flying down chimneys. I was in Wembley Stadium years ago when a guy from the Hebridean revivals were there. And he said, I can still remember being in the fields and these lights, these balls of light were flying to the church. And we all knew it was time time to gather. Whoa, next slide. So we began to honor, we began to honor this realm of the angels. And I, the way I did it personally was I held Gary Oates' book and I said, yes, Lord, yes, I'll have it. Because the, remember, Smith Wigglesworth said, God will bypass thousands of people that are praying for one that's believing. So it wasn't a prayer. It was like, I'm having it all. Just want to let you know, Jesus, let's just lay our cards on the table. If there's anything going on right now, I'm in. And I go, heavenly glory is mine. Angelic realms are mine. Mystical realm of heaven. Heavenly glory is not even an option, God. It's not even an option for you. Even if it's not in my scroll, this is the kind of stuff I used to pray. Even if it's not even for me, I'm having it. Because you said to the one that uses what they got, you'll give what other people didn't want. So I'm, I'm going to cream up every anointing. I'm going to suck up everything. So they started to visit us and they absolutely blasted us and we had a pillar of fire and voices and I talked a little bit about that last month and I got so blasted by the presence of God, it lasted until um, quarter past one in the morning and it started at five past eleven, I was having a cup of tea with a friend and I was just saying, I'm still hungry, we'd encountered God, we'd soaked, we'd laughed, we got whacked, but I was still hungry (laughs) and I had a cup of tea in my hand and I said, but I still have now my baby, I'm pregnant man! (laughs) God's made this generation pregnant. We've gone off the food we used to eat. We can't help it. Something's happened. There's a conspiracy of heaven going on, producing a new outcome, producing a new possibility. And I started to say, Lord, I haven't had my baby. I said to my friend, I haven't had my baby. Suddenly a roaring sound came from behind of us. I just went, whoa. It went, we built up like that. It came down on us. The first 20 minutes, it was so powerful, we couldn't even move our bodies. So we were frozen in the spot. It started to lift, and I said, what's going on? My friend said, I'm not going home tonight. (laughs) For some reason, he took his glasses off at that point. I don't know why. I'm not going home tonight. And before we could do anything, it went... (laughs) Anyway, it blew everything up, and my wife didn't know what to do with me because I was a mess, you know? It took three years for me to come out of whatever had happened. And in that time, we went out on the streets. We saw hundreds of people say... People would walk up to me and say, I want what you've got. It happened three times. Just I'd be out. We'd walk into the pasty shop. It would hit the staff. We went on the airplane. It hit a rugby team. Gold just appeared on them all. They were all saying, is this a camera show? Really? 
they said, is this some kind of candid camera show? But my wife was like, we had a kid's party and I was so overwhelmed by God and it's on one of the tapes, so I won't go through it again. She cried because the state I was in, because God had just taken over, it wasn't nine to five. God doesn't just work on two hours on a Sunday. He wants to give you the most exciting life. He came to give you life, 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 a crazy, weird life because he's wild and crazy and weird. That's who he is. That's what he does. So we cried out for the angels and my wife was like uh, in the kitchen and I was on the phone organizing a prophetic conference of Sharon Stone in Cardiff. She'd asked me to organize a, a prophecy school for her. So I was on the phone to her and I was walking around the house and suddenly my wife was ironing in the kitchen and I kid you not, a pillar of fire came. A pillar of fire? A, okay, it's hard to say that with a straight face. A pillar of, a pillar of fire, a pillar of fire came in the kitchen and for two hours came on my wife and she shook under the presence of God and I was putting my hands going, wow, wow, wow. Anyway, it totally changed her. From then on, the, the angels were on a case. This burden lifted. This was our first conference. It was called Closer to the Flame in 2006. The way that the conference came about was we weren't in ministry, but I was just pursuing God. I'd given up my job to pursue God, actually. Not because I'm against jobs. God was using me in the job. I love, <laughs> I love jobs. <laughs> jobs were before the fall. I'm not speaking about jobs. It's, I'm speaking about what was in my scroll. <laughs> God said, pray. So I went for it, and it started with Fridays, and then I, I, I ended up praying full time, basically. And God was coming so powerfully, and we, one day I went into a trance, and I kid you not, a flyer flo- floated, <laughs> floated, a conference flyer <laughs> floated in front of my face, and it was called Closer to the Flame. The page turned, it said, Godfrey Burtle, Martin Scott, and Sharon Stone. And I knew that was the first conference we had to do. We, we just funded it, my wife and I. We, we asked every friend we knew to be the team. God broke out. This is what happened. Rachel was there, and a see a friend of ours who sees angels. She said, watch out. And these angels slapped into Rachel, and we got it on camera. We got the warning that it was going to happen. Do you remember that, Pat? That's your hand there, isn't it? <laughs> So Rachel got whacked by the angels, and they became a part of our family. Like They'd show up and do strange stuff. We never knew when they are going to show up, but we found out that they, were, they carried just an atmosphere that was so beautiful and intoxicating, and we, we made a place for them. Let's go on to another picture. But then they started like moving in our meetings, and this is one of our meetings in Cardiff. Um, I love this because you can see that she's in such ecstasy with that. I've looked at this in so many different ways. There's no natural explanation for it. But her face says it all. And I love her son standing there. Wow. So that people started to spin round. And this one woman would spin yeah. round. And she actually... <laughs> but I had an email about why are all these young people spinning in your meetings? And I mean, they were spinning so fast, you wouldn't believe. I mean, like, it was not natural. And someone emailed me and said, this isn't, this isn't right. So I looked up what it said when Jacob wrestled with an angel and it meant to spin around violently. Do you know what it produces? A new name, a new destiny, a new outcome. And the woman that it was spinning ended up going to Africa and was involved in raising the dead. Doesn't sound so stupid then, does it? A few cracked ribs don't sound so bad when you're dead raising and you're, you're sleeping in a house with rats because something's happened in your heart that has dislocated you to locate you into destiny. Come on, next one. Woo! This is one of the gemstones. I've seen a couple of these. These are the biggest ones we know of. 40 of these are on the earth. They've all been delivered by angels. Jeff Jansen showed me his gemstone. This is one from Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. They've been tested. They, they, are, they are precious stones, but uncategor- uncategorizable. Jeff Jansen got his one through this angel appearing called Emma. And this is a bit offensive, isn't it? An angel called Emma. But they can be called anything and have more than one name. And if you say, well, they're all male. Well, the Bible says they're neither male or female. He saw in a vision Emma was coming. And then she actually came in the room. But she walked past Jeff Jansen because he'd wanted one of these stones. And gave this, this stone to a guy. It appeared. And this guy had loads of them. He got covered in gold dust. And Jeff Jansen was pleased for him, but kind of went back to his seat going, that's my stone. 
<laughs> his orphan, his little orphan came out like, God, do you love me? This old guy, he's dead now, actually, but amazing guy. Um, th- this guy got up, and he, the Lord said, give it to Jeff. So he walked over to Jeff and with, like, 30 people watching. As he walked, it split and vibrated into two stones, one red and one orange. And he gave him the red stone. Let's keep going. Let's go on to another one. So they started to come, and this there's, there's me looking a lot younger and thinner. <laughs> This is in Ireland, but this is the type of thing we see when angels come. See these people, they're completely ignoring what's going on. They're caught up in the spirit. And I found that they catch you up into something. In this particular meeting, we had oil cover the Bible and start dripping off the Bible. Everyone in the room got to touch the oil. It was sheening out of the Bible. Carry on. This is one of our meetings in Cardiff. I don't even know what that is. But I like it. I want more of it. Okay. Carry on. This is our house. This started at the dinner table with friends. A wave of glory came in, and we went, whoa, what's that? For five hours, wave after wave of glory came until we had a house full of people. Someone had traveled all the way from Australia to visit us, and this thing opened up in the spirit, and we got it on camera. If you go on to the next shot, you can see what it looks like. It's got something flying into it. <laughs> We think it's small. That could be the size of our sun. It's just how far away is it? So we begin to have these supernatural, wonderful experiences and gold dust and all this other stuff. And then angels would come and bring clarity. Like I was reading these books and I couldn't get it. I couldn't get it. And suddenly one day this angel came and stood behind me. And it, she, was, he, she was like water pouring down on me. And I reread my books and I could understand them. And I began to see the DNA of Enoch was, 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 was blended through time from John and Enoch. And I saw how Enoch and John mirrored one another. That they both were God's friends. They both got caught up. They both moved through time. They both skipped death. And they both were a pattern of what it's going to be like at the end, a new mystical era. And I understood all that from an angel called Clarity that was in my house. I want to put a little video on for you guys, okay? And it's a fun video. I hope you're going to like it. It's of Bobby Connor talking about the angel Emma. It's a Bethel. Bill Johnson. Can you turn it up a wee bit? And there's maybe, I don't know, a couple of thousand people, maybe 1,500. And so me and Bob are sitting there in the chairs, and Bob looks over there at me and he goes, Well, yeah. and I'm not making fun of him. He, uh, the way I talk, I, I don't have room to make fun of anybody. <laughs> Bob goes, Well, we're going to have a lot of healings tonight. I said to Bob, How do you know that? And he said to me, Emma's here. I said, Who? Bob Jones said to me, Emma. I said, Emma who? He looked at me with me and he said, Now, I don't, you don't like it, but Joe, that's your... Emma the angel. Now, I'm sitting on the platform. I've never in my whole life heard of Emma the angel. So I said to Bob, and we're mic'd up. Now, the people are like this. I said, uh, you mean to tell me there's an angel in this room named Emma? He goes, yeah. I said to him, I don't see her. And he's getting mad. Well, she's here. And I said to Bob, if you can see her, I can see her. And he goes, well, she's here. So I said to God, hey, God, if there's an angel in this room named Emma, I want to see her. So I stopped all the talking. I started looking. I looked all the way down this road, all the way back to the balcony, all the way down. I looked the whole room over. I mean, I looked the whole room over. And I said to Bob, I don't see an angel named Emma. He's real mad now. <laughs> yeah. She's here. And I, I knew Bob wasn't lying. So I said, God, open my eyes that I may see. Remember, I looked. It's another thing when he allows you to see. So I, I, now, you, this is the absolute truth. I said, Lord, open my eyes that I can see what Bob's seeing. When I said that, open my eyes that I may see. Back at the very back of the building, Bill, I saw what appeared, you know, like a shadow against the wall, and the shadow steps out like this. Now I see a, what appeared to me to be a small lady in a brown, shiny headscarf and a soft, long coat down to her feet. 
standing there like this. So I said to Bob, hey, Bob, does she have on a shiny brown headscarf and a long brown coat? And he goes, yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you what happened that night. Cancers were healed. You cannot imagine the miracles that happened. And then the word about Emma got out. And then there's always those people, I don't believe that. Well, you won't see it. You understand that? You have to believe it to see it. John 11.40. John 11.40, Jesus said, Did I not say unto you that if you would believe, you would see? Skepticism says, I ain't believing it till I see it. Jesus says, believe it in order to see it. So uh, if you want to see, God will open your eyes to see. Second, Second Kings 6, 16 and 17 says, Oh, open his eyes that he may see. And instantly he could see into the realm of the Spirit. We can have the lights back on now. Are you guys okay? I know it's a bit messy tonight. I didn't know how to tackle this subject, you know, because it is a messy subject. And I know how offensive it is. I don't want to be offensive. I want to be real. Because repentance is coming back to another way of seeing things. Repentance is coming back to what is true. And what is true is that he commands his angels concerning you in all your ways. They're intrinsically involved. You wouldn't be a Christian if an angel hadn't been involved in harvesting you. When he released you out of heaven, he released angels to guard you. Jesus said, don't despise the little children. Their angels, their angels, are always seeing the face of the Father. They're transdimensional. And we're in a new era where they're going to interact with us. I was just in Idaho in this big, uh, big church, and it was before the conference. And um, it was in Seattle. And I went into the hall, and suddenly, this is the kind of thing that's happening through honor, and it's new for me. It's a very tall building. The angel was there. The angel that was given the mandate to partner with them for the blueprint of the house. And it was huge, and it looked like water. But at the top, it had a face, and I knew it went all the way to the heart of the Father, and it laughed in the Father. It laughed with his joy as justice was released. And it, his name was Breaker, and it released waves and breakers to wash and bring breakout and breakthrough. And it began to speak to me about the blueprint of the church. I went and got the elders the next day, brought them in, introduced them to the angel. The, the, one of the main elders there had been told that she was going to meet the angel before I came. And then I was able to teach them about what the Lord had shown me about their church through the angel communicating me with me what was meant to happen amongst that congregation. Thank you. You're saying I'm doing well. I don't know what. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he likes it. He's back. But I'm telling you, I recommend him to <laughs> Come on. Wow. Woo! Wow. Listen, if you guys don't cheer me on, Bobby Connor will. Did you hear that? I'd recommend him to you. Wow. Thank you, Lord. Jesus is cheering me on. Wow. Wow, yes. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So we're in crazy days, guys. We're in crazy. We're in crazy days. And there's so much more I could talk about on this subject. I've really only, I, I'm only on page two of like, I don't know, 14 pages for tonight. But I want to release you into something tonight because that's why I came to Bath. I came because the Lord wrote it in the scroll because you guys have put a demand on something in the spirit. You have. He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. He's chosen this place, whether by many or few. He's opening up hubs that will be the rest in place for his head because his head's been looking for places that to call home. And though, wherever he's home, the angels will be at home. Wherever he's home, the cloud of witnesses will be at home. Wherever he's at home, the court will sit. Wherever he's at home, there will be provision. There will be vision. There will be blueprints. There will be scrolls. There will be landscapers and gardeners of a new future, those who will rebuild ruined cities. They will be called repairers of the breach. 
We need repairers of the breach right now in England, in Britain. We need repairers of the wall. We need people that will rise up and walk with angels and and produce a different outcome. We need their help. We need what they carry. We need what they bring. We need cancer-busting power. We need the lightnings of heaven. We need the winds of heaven. Where are the stadium events? Where are the wonder workers? Where are those that are carrying something? They're not just like pressing it for healing. They carry life. Whoa. The first angel I ever met was in Alaska. I think it was 2002. And this angel came to me in a trance. I fell into a trance in this meeting. A heavy glory came on me. And I saw a man running towards me (laughs) in the distance wearing like a silver, shiny silver flexible kind of armor. But it was not an armor. It was like material. But it was it was like the Hobbit. (laughs) He could run, and he ran, and he looked like a lean, thin athlete with a big smile. And he said, "My name is Swift." And he prophesied. He said, "From now on, the word of the Lord will be fulfilled swiftly. It will not be delayed." And I said, Lord, you're going to have to give me a scripture for that. And he said, that's no problem. He gave me a scripture for it. It was in Ezekiel 12, 23, where they'd been sitting on prophecy for so long that no one believed Isaiah. No one believed Ezekiel. They told them stuff was going to happen. They told them that Jerusalem was going to get trashed. They even had a proverb in the land, it says, that all prophecies fail. And the Lord spoke to Ezekiel and said, tell them this. I'm going to put an end to that saying. And this is what it says. But say to them, the days are at hand and the fulfillment of every vision. Wow! This is what Swift told me, that we're in days of breakthrough. We're in days of fulfillment. We're in days of destiny. Yay! We're in days of breakthrough. We're in days of fulfillment. We're in days of destiny. I know I'm cutting against the apathy. I know I'm cutting against that proverb that says all prophecies fail. Where was Gene Darnell's word? Where was the one billion soul harvest or whatever it was? Whoa, hey, who cares what men say? It's what heaven's saying that counts. It's what heaven's doing that counts. It's what God's saying. And he says heaven rules. And it said this, For no more shall there be any false vision or flattering divination within the house of Israel. The flattering prophecies are ending. For I am the Lord speak, and the word I speak will come to pass. It will no more be postponed. No more delay. No more delay. No more delay. Wow. For in your days, O rebellious house. Wow. In your days, rebellious house. Wow, I will say the word and perform it. The new oracles are coming. Those who have been beyond the veil, those that live in the spirit. And I said last time, I think the price of our generation is will we live in the spirit? Will we choose to center on truth and live in that glory realm? Because that glory realm is here for every one of us. The gospel has broken times and seasons. The gospel wine has been poured out 2,000 years ago. There is a realm where we've got free access, free access to all that God is and all that he does. Wow. So I am a new creation. I live in a brand new world. In my world, there are angels. In my world, there are cloud of witnesses. And I cannot thank them enough for the help that they've given me. And I never thought years ago I'd say that I'm friends with people in heaven, but I am. Whoa. So it's time for the book of truth to be released. Daniel 10, 21. I was in South Africa and I had a dream. And the Lord Jesus was standing next to me. I was with Ian Clayton. And we were in this, uh, on the safari. <laughs> I just wanted to see one of those little guys that pops up out of the hole. Forget the rhinos. I want to see one of those. And I did see one. God brought one out just for me on its own. That's all I wanted to see. We were on this safari and it was a crazy night in the spirit. Uh, you might have heard Ian talk about it, but he decided to not go into heaven, but to ask them to come to his room. And all night there was people queuing up. <laughs> it's true. 
Anyway, I was in a dream, and in my dream, I was by this bank vault, big silver bank vault, like Mission Impossible, and Jesus was standing next to me, and he just opened it, it opened up, and in there was a, a, like a steel table with a small black book. We stood either side of it. I said, what is it? He said, it's the book of truth. It's been unlocked. I didn't even know what it was. It's Daniel 10, 21, the scripture or the spirit of truth. And what's the truth coming through my lips now is to set the, us free. It's to set us free, not from sin or death, because we've been set free from the record of sin and death. It's to set us free from the wrong thinking that has prevented us being a new creation, a manifest in sonship. But gross darkness is upon the earth right now. If you don't want it, listen, like I said before, I will have it. Wales will have it, but I believe that England has to have it because of the government that you carry in the Commonwealth of Nations and because the center of the economy of the world is in London and the media is all affected by London and that God chose this nation. God chose this nation and maybe I'm a pain in the butt for this nation, I don't know, but I'm going to provoke it until it's awakened, until the lion roars out of England, until we stop saying, hey, great, we got Graham Cook. Okay, well, Graham Cook's moved to America. Move on. Come on, release something. There has to be a release of a company of people. And listen... They could be housewives because one of my most profound dreams was about mystic housewives. And I saw this woman in a Laura Ashley shirt, a skirt, and she, was, she had a hoover. And the Lord said to me, I'm releasing mystic housewives. And I saw that this woman was being taught by the Lord. She was walking with God. And she stood up in this Anglican church. And she, she was trusted and loved by the church. She was a very caring, loving person like my mum here in her church. And she said, Pastor, can I speak this Sunday? And they said, we trust you. She got up and said... Today I'm going to let you in on a secret. For the last seven years I've been mentored by God on the mystic secrets of heaven. And today I'm allowed to begin to speak what I have seen and teach what I've heard. Woo! Whoa, come on now. Yeah, (laughs) mystic housewives. Wow. Okay. There's so much more to say. So much more. Ah. Wow! Woo! Yes! Yeah, 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 yes! Wakey, wakey! Wakey, wakey! Wakey, wakey! Ring out the bells! Ring out the wild skies! Ring out the bells! Whoa, keep your eyes on Britain, keep your eyes on Britain. I've had a recommendation from Bobby Connor. Whoa, God is cheering me. Honestly, I couldn't do this if I wasn't, if I didn't know how to strengthen myself in the Lord. There's got to be a group that are namby pamby moaners and complainers that know how to be strengthened in the Lord because David strengthened himself in the Lord when all of his friends wanted to kill him, when all their families had been robbed away, and he still knew how to pull on heaven. He knew how to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Come on, come on, woo! Come on, yes. The true spiritual authority is the Lord himself being your greatest encourager. If I was still pleasing men, Paul said, I would not be a bond slave of Christ. There's a generation rising that have had enough of the political spirit and complaining and moaning that they're not going to engage in the civil war. That they're going to be life-bringing spirits. Life-bringing spirits full of love and grace and truth and compassion. Oh, okay, I'm done, I think, yeah. I'm done for tonight. But let's stand up. We're going to pray. Thank you, Father. Shabba. Hey, 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 hey. Oh. New Britain, Lord. We've had great Britain. We want a new Britain, Father. 
And Lord, I don't know what's going on with Bath, but you, heaven, is, is looking at Bath, Lord. And I'm really standing. I'm standing like Paul, travailing. I'm travailing for this city and for England. And Lord, we're standing as Ecclesia today. We appear before God in Zion. We ask today, Lord, for the court to sit. We honor the judge and the council. The cloud of witnesses and the angels, and we're standing today before you, Lord, honoring that there's a throne of grace where we can receive grace, which is divine enablement in our time of need. If there's ever a time of need, right now is that time for Europe. It's an emergency. It's not a normal day. When I turn on my TV, it's not normal. We ask this hour that you'd open up the scroll of England and the destiny scrolls of everyone here, that they would be presented before the courts of heaven this day, that the books would be open, that you would release destiny, breakthrough, and fulfillment. Fulfillment, come. Destiny, come. Breakthrough, come. Angels of breakthrough, angels of destiny, angels of glory. For no more will the word of the Lord be delayed. No more delay. We call delay into the court and resistance into the court and apathy and that slumbering devil and criticism and religion. And we ask for divorce. We repent. We repent. We repent. Forgive us, we and your people have sinned. We have been apathetic and slumbering. We've been critical and religious. And we've delayed and delayed and delayed and delayed. Lord, forgive us for our unbelief. We stand like Daniel in chapter 9 and say, forgive us this day. We present the scrolls and say it's time, just like in Daniel's time when he knew Jeremiah's scroll had to be fulfilled. There is something, there is something that has to be fulfilled in our generation. It cannot be delayed another generation. It will not be delayed. I call Swift to come into the courts and to testify. Testify, testify, testify. Testify. Lord, I call on the cloud of witnesses. Witnesses means to testify in a court. I call on Jean Darnell. I call on Smith Wigglesworth. I call on Evan Roberts. I call on Wigglesworth and and Wesley and, and George Whitfield. We call on the martyrs. We call on the voices of heaven for justice to be rendered in our favor, for something new to begin to happen in 2015. Your message through Comet Lovejoy was that love and joy is meant to overshadow the world, not darkness. Lord, we present today in the courts the the, the prophecy that Paul Keith Davis gave. The, The sons of God would respond in like manner to the evil and there would be angels released. I ask this night that tonight, Lord, the angels would gather And they would come to us and we would begin to have visitations, 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 visitations. We contend for a new normal today, a new normal, a new normal, that there would be so many angelic visitations, it would no longer be considered a significant event. And we just say on a personal level, come to my house, Lord. Come to my house, Lord. Come to my kitchen, Lord. My bedroom, Lord. Angels of glory, come. Angels of revelation, come. Miracle working angels, follow me. Miracle working angels, lightnings of God. Heavenly glory is mine. Heavenly glory is mine. Yes, come on, England. Come on. Release the sound in the courts of heaven. Be ecclesia on behalf of David Cameron and the nation and the children and the broken and the lost. Harvest glory come. We present Bob Jones' scroll. One billion souls and more plus interests. We say, Lord, Bob Jones, did he not prophesy that his ceiling will be our floor? We present that, say, Lord, it will be my floor that we're going beyond that you said. You said that you prepared something better, 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 better for us. 
I call for the governors and tutors to be released from heaven. The governing ones, the tutors and the mentors and the teachers. That everyone will be strengthened in the Lord. Let us begin to have a heavenly ministry, a heavenly mandate, a heavenly voice. You slumbering devil, we call for the beheading of that slumbering devil. We ask right now that your angels would lock it up and cut off his head. Cut off his head. Cut off his head. Whoa, Lord, decapitation, even as the enemy's decapitating on the earth, we will decapitate these dark spirits. We will bring justice. Justice, 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 justice. Whoa. And Lord, I ask that you make me one of the burning hearts. Did you not say to me, Lord, that in these days you would release a company of burning hearts whose testimony in heaven will be their fire never died because the fire will be fueled by the burning heart of the Father for it is the bosom of the Father that we're coming from. For Jesus came from the bosom of the Father and said, I want them to be where I am. I want them to be where I am in the burning fire of the Father's heart. John 10, 10, John 10, 10, life more abundantly. Fullness of life, crazy days, crazy days, crazy days, crazy days. Thank you, Father. Wow. We honor the judge. (laughs) Thank you that, Father, you are our judge. You are our... The righteous judge. Thank you, Jesus. You are our advocate and intercessor. Thank you that you change our language so that it's right. That's what intercessors do. They speak the language of the court so that even if we make a mistake, they they undo it. And they present it in a way the court recognizes. Thank you, Jesus, that you stand with me in this place to make up for my prayers. That we are heard, we are seen, and we are loved. I honor the angels this night. We love you. We love you. Thank you for all the service that you've rendered to us. Thank you so much. Cloud of Witnesses, thank you for cheering us. Thank you for believing in us. We feel like you guys did way better than we did. 